सो वो पी लेट्स ट्राई सॉल्विंग दिस क्वेश्चन इन विच दिस कॉम्पाउंड विच इज नोन एज एन एलिन इज ट्रीटेड इन एसिडिक मीडियम सो द एलिन विच इज गिवेन टू अस इज एच टू सी डबल बॉन सी डबल बॉन सी एच टू इट सीम्स टू बी वेरी सिंपल रिएक्शन बिकॉज इट्स जस्ट एडिंग एच प्लस यू हैव एच प्लस इन द मीडियम there is an electrophile and then there is a nucleophilic substrate yeah it can attack on site a or site b of the substrate let's say also notice that this site and this site are identical see so if it attacks on site a the bond shift in this direction and you get a positive charge here okay and you will get h2c double bond c h ch2 and a positive charge here Now, say it if it attacks on site B, you are going to get H2C because the bond is shifting in this direction now. Double bond C, positive charge C, positive charge on C, CH2, H, and H. Sorry, there is no H. Now, which intermediate will be stable? As you can see that. it appears to be a delocalized i mean h2c the bond shifting this direction c double bond ch2 h here and a positive charge here so this one is seems to be more stable one yes and next thing is very simple which is just addition of water you got water and lone pair here they attack on this carbocation and alcohol will be formed yes that is h2c double bond ch ch2oh now seems to be very simple right yes but this is not your answer but why gopi the reason lies with c double bond c double bond c can you explain yeah, in detail I, yeah H2C double bond C double bond CH2 as you can see the carbon atom here is sp hybridized if you look into the electronic configuration of carbon it is 1s2 2s2 2p2 in the ground state in excited state it will be 1s2 2s1 2p3 now Let's call it as S P X P Y P Z. So in S P hybridization, one S orbital and one P orbital are involved. Say this S and this P Z are involved in hybridization. They will mix and form two hybrid orbitals. Yeah, and you have two pi orbitals. One is P X and P Y. and also if you take any double bond c double bond c if this is the line in which they form sigma bond the pi orbitals will be perpendicular to it and that is if it is py then this would also be py and now here in this aline we have for this we have two pi orbitals and this has one pi orbital and this has one pi and the middle carbon has two pi orbitals yes let's draw it more clearly i'll illustrate this now let's consider two planes and now i'm supposing this to be internuclear axis of the carbons This is our central carbon atom, and to this carbon atom, we have two carbons attached. Say this carbon, here is our one carbon, and here is our other carbon. Okay. And let say that P Z be along the internuclear axis. If you take P X and P Y, they will be perpendicular to this Z. Now if you consider px to be in this plane then py would be perpendicular to it in this plane okay 
and this carbon is making pi bond with this carbon you call it as px so this pi orbital should also be px as i have told here and this is also along the plane call it as px and since this orbital is making a pi bond with this and this is py you have this thing also should be py this thing as py as you can see for the first in the first intermediate which you have taken the bond has shifted this direction and you have vacant orbital along py direction now as you can see there is a pi bond in this plane but py is perpendicular to px and py so okay. no delocalization is possible here so you are trying to say that in, in intermediate a there will be no delocalization yes that is this step actually doesn't exist okay i'll make it more clear for you through this benzene example with which you are very familiar if you take this to be the plane of benzene then all the pi orbitals are perpendicular to it perpendicular to this plane and they will be in delocalization only if these are perpendicular to one plane one plane single plane as you can see that case is not possible here okay so no resonance exists for the first compound now let's look in the second possible case the only possible one the intermediate is h2c double bond c plus ch3 here now there is hyperconjugation possible for it i'll show it for you if you want make it as ch2h the bond shifted here and this lots h plus and you will get h2c double bond c double bond ch2 so actually intermediate b will be more stable yeah this is ch yeah yeah this is more stable so and now this is your int intermediate next thing involves addition of water so water will add on the central carbon yeah forming an alcohol double bond c this is basically enol as you can see and this alcohol is a special alcohol that is enol yeah it will tautomerize as shown in the previous example that is you will get h3c c double bond o ch3 as this you is know. your final product now so let's now summarize what we did in this question first first h plus was attacked attacked the compound and two intermediate were possible one is this one one was intermediate a and the other was intermediate b we figure we figure out that intermediate b will be more stable and h, h, uh, and h2o will attack on that carbon forming an enol yes which will tautomerize to an carbonyl compound yes now we'll give you one more example for your sake that is ph c double bond c double bond c in the presence of hco plus what will the product be i'll give you the answer if you want the answer is ph c oh c double bond c gopi can you also give a hint yeah i will think of resonance possibility with ph ring just check if there can be resonance with ph ring or not there will obviously be resonance and try to figure out the mechanism for it now okay that's the end of our question let's move on to the next question So Gopi let's try solving this question in which this alkyne is treated with this series of reagents and we have to figure out what is x y w and z so the alkene given to us is butyne which is ch3 ch2 c triple bond ch now look at the first reagent given to us this is 
BH3 in presence of THF. So what's THF? THF is called tetrahedrofuran. I'll route its structure. It is a furanose ring which is five membered ring with oxygen in the ring. And Gopi, what's its use? It's very useful because if you look into the electronic configuration of boron, which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1 in the ground state, and in excited state, it would be 1s2, 2s1, and 2p2. Okay. Say this is its box structure. Now it has three electro three hydrogens. With that, it's able to fulfill pair up these three electrons but if you see one orbital is vacant so yes. it has not fulfilled its octet also you know that oxygen has lone pair of electrons okay so it stabilizes bh3 by donating its electrons that is so it's filling the vacancy yeah like this okay now let's move back move back to the question BH3 boron H H H If you look at the electronegativities of hydrogen and boron the electronegativity of hydrogen is 2.1 whereas for boron it is 2 So there will be delta positive on boron Yes delta positive on boron and delta negative on hydrogen because it is pulling electrons towards it and if you take alkene We all know that it's a nucleophile and it gives electrophilic addition reaction as we have been discussing from previous problems and the electrophile here is boron let's see how it attacks H B H H now you have delta minus here and delta plus here yeah now this nucleophile donates its electrons to boron and you get a positive charge here and this hydrogen donates this bond pair to it okay that is you will get so it's a transition state it's a transition state and after this this bond completely cleaves away and what you are going to get is c c c double bond c b H H So Gopi what will we be calling him this compound we call it as alkenyl boron Okay because you have alkenyl and not alkyl Okay You can also observe that this boron still has two more hydrogens So there is possibility that another alkenyl group gets attached to it or uh, substitute this hydrogen that's what the thing that's happened here it reacts with two more the compounds given to us that is ch3 ch2 c triple bond ch and you are going to get a compound like this one so we'll get a tri alkenyl borane yeah exactly for simplicity let's call this as r so i'll write it as r r r remember here r is not alkyl it's alkyl yeah it's alkenyl now up to this part it is called as hydroboration Now let's look into the second part where you are using the reagent H2O2 in presence of OH minus. Let's look into the structure of H2O2 where you have H O O H and this is acetic hydrogen because okay. oxygen is electronegative and it pulls the electrons to it leaving H plus. Also you have basic medium OH minus 
it takes this so it'll h take the h plus i yeah you will get h o o minus now if you look into this tri alkenyl boron here boron has a vacant orbital as yes. we have discussed before and this oxygen is capable of donating its electrons to this boron okay so you are going to get r b r r o o h and a negative charge here and from this one one more crucial step is going to occur this oh group departs and this attacks here okay so the oxygen atom will be sandwiched between boron and al- alkenyl group yeah i'll tell you why this step is occurred you know that oxygen has lone pair of electrons because both these oxygens are bonded to each other these repels each other as a result this bond tri- is weak yeah this bond is weaker and it tries to cleave away and this r okay gets attached to this and you will get this one now similarly the same thing will happen to these r groups too and finally you are going to get b o r o r o r and o r and o r now let's look at the last part given to it which is h3oo plus that is after obtaining this compound you have taken this mixture and you have put it in acidic medium it will simply hydrolyze it yeah that is you have lone pairs here h plus will will be there which has vacant orbital oxygen lone pairs get attached to it you will get protonated oxygen like this where you have or or and this leaves away you will get alcohol roh and b this is not stable also you have water in the medium okay it gives it so you are going to get oh b or or and it further splits you will get two more roh and you get b oh 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 okay so boric acid will be formed yeah the it is step. boric acid also if you look into this structure what is r which is given to us c c c double bond c so write it down c c c double bond c and oh is attached to this carbon okay so our alcohol formed is an enol yeah E and, it will, and it will tautomerize yeah because it's in acidic medium the mechanism of this is already taught to you so directly i'm writing the product which is h3c ch2 c c double bond o now this is going to be your final product now we have completed the first part of it let's look into the second part of the question now that we are done with the first part of reaction which is hydroboration oxidation since it's very large one let's quickly recapitulate what we have learned here we have a summary for you so in the first part of the reaction bh2 and hydrogen are being added across the triple bond so it's known as hydroboration and the second part of the reaction in which h2o2 is being added and to r and roh is being formed it is known as ox- oxidation So the whole reaction is known as hydroboration oxidation. Two things that you have to keep in mind is that the hydrogen that is being added across the triple bond is being coming from is coming from BH3. And if it is BD3 then deuterium will be present in the instead of H as I have shown you here. And once one thing also you should remember is that the R in, in the R wise the OH is coming from H2O2. So if it's D, so if D two O two is there, then O D will be there instead of O H. So, also one more thing which we need to discuss is here we have discussed the case only for alkynes, but for alkenes also the mechanism would be the same, but the product would be different. 
like here we have got an aldehyde and there we will get an alcohol for example let's consider a simple case where we have this alkene and we have used the same reagents and the final product we are, which we are going to get is OH on the last carbon in the previous case an enol was formed so that's why it turned out to be an aldehyde and here no tautomerization which would be evident if you write the mechanism first let try it out yourself from the mechanism which is given to you now let's move to the next part of the question where you have treated this x which is basically ch3 ch2 ch2 c double bond o h with ch3 minus ngbr plus this is rmgx if you remember it can act as either base or a nucleophile or a nucleophile if there is acidic hydrogen it acts as base if there isn't any acidic hydrogen it acts as nucleophile now here you have more electrophilic side because of presence of high electronegative o and now this act as nucleophile and there isn't any much acidic hydrogen here it acts here and you are going to get ch3 CH2, CH2, C H three, C H two, C H two, C O minus. A, we'll get a two degree alcohol. Yes. And you have hydrolyzed this, and it will take H plus. As told before, you will get a secondary alcohol as shown here. And now you have treated this with N A O E T. Sodium ethanol. Now I'll give the answer for it. I want you to try it yourself. The answers are C C C double bond C and C C C C double bond C. It is major and it is minor. This is because here E two elimination is occurred, which is. As I've already discussed in alkene chapter, and the reagent sodium NaOET will suggest you that. Okay, we are done with this question. So, with this we have completed this alkynes. Now let's move to the benzene chapter.